Hi there, it's Liz Yule from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you for joining me again today. I don't know if you saw my earlier post, which was in... What's the word I'm looking for? Commemoration of Remembrance Day, which is what it is in the UK today. Um, this is not. This is part of a blog hop with Kylie Batucci in Australia. It's part of her... Um, she runs a training program and anyone who's in the training program gets to be involved in block hops with her if they wish and I thought I would bring you this project which uses the uh, I can't remember what they're called let me grab them peaceful bowels stamp set this does come as a bundle which is gorgeous uh, but I am only using the stamp set today I've used the shaded spruce and gold striped ribbon uh, for my decoration and I also used the gold edged uh, metallic ribbon in the annual catalogue this is very vanilla and I've made it all on a very vanilla base and I've just done lots of heat embossing and some die cutting and some use of the trimmer and I've got bells on the top so I thought I would have a go at doing it in a different colour way. So, so I'm going to use cherry cobbler and copper, which may or may not work. We're going to find out together. So I have a piece of cherry cobbler cardstock. It's cut at my usual sized first mat. Uh, I will have all of the measurements on my website uh, and you'll go straight to the blog post for this project if you follow the link below. Um, so yeah, have a look there. Uh, I'll also have links to what I have used uh, there. They're also in my description bar. But um, yeah, um, do remember if you want to see more videos from me to subscribe to my channel, which is down in the bottom right hand corner. And of course, if you like the project, do give it a thumbs up. Any questions and, or comments, I am very happy if you would like to leave those in the um, below uh, I think it's beneath the description bar. So I've applied embossing buddy all over my cherry cobbler and now using Versamark I'm using the largest of the Peaceful Bows stamp and I will also be using this one if I need it uh, but it is quite a good one for filling in little spaces. Now you may not be able to see what's happening but I can because using Versamark you can get a watermark effect and particularly on dark cardstock, um, it is reasonably easy to see. It's not easy, easy to see, but it's it's OK. Um, so let's see. I might come in with that in a moment. The small one. Now, there will be a gap in the middle for my sentiment piece, but I want to make sure that I've got as many areas covered as possible. Uh, simply because I want as many areas covered as possible. And it's my card, so I get to do what I want with it. So where have we got gaps? Here, obviously, in the corner down here. I have to say I did do a test run with um, copper on cherry cobbler, and it's kind of nice. It's a lot more subtle than the... Yep, that should work. Then the um, gold on the shaded spruce. Ooh, tiny little overlap, but never mind. And I'm just going to come in just there to fill that little space there. Right, now, in a moment, you should be able to see where all of this is because I'm going to cover it in gold embossing powder. The key is going to be finding somewhere I can hold it. Because having popped Versamark all over the edge of the card, not a huge number of places to hold it. Uh, there, possibly, or just the edges. Uh, maybe I'll do it that way. I think we can do a bit better than that from, oops, from this angle. And then just 
the other side to do. And then a good tap on the side and a flick from the back just to get any loose bits off. And I'm also, before I go any further, there are little bits in the wrong place. They're probably going to be covered, but I would rather not run the risk. OK, so that's ready to go. I'm going to pop that to one side whilst I grab a scrap of cherry cobbler. And it really is a scrap. In fact, I might, I might just mm, chop a bit. I, this is where I did my test. So I might just chop that bit off because then it'll be easier for later. Right, so more embossing buddy and the sentiment which is may the spirit of peace gently fill your heart and home in this most wonderful time of year which is a nice sentiment to send to anyone so i'm just going to pop it there i'm not too worried about angle or precision on that because i am going to die cut this out and I'm going to show you a little trick when it comes to that, which you probably know already, but, you know, a little revision is never a bad thing. And then flick. And I have got a couple of bits that I don't want there, mostly. The rest, I think, is OK. Right, lid on the embossing powder before I go any further. And then we can grab the trusty cheese board. What would I do without my trusty cheese board? Right, let's pop that there. Get my heat gun. I don't at this point know how many people are on the blog hop. I would say lots, but um, hopefully you'll have a, have a quick look at some of the projects. I should say there is no theme on this particular blog hop. Uh, the only theme is use current product. So you will get to see all sorts of things. And you know I'm going to say, I could watch this for hours, because I pretty much always do. I love heat embossing. It's just oh, amazing. Oops. There are a couple of bits that are stray, but not too bad. Not too bad. Right, so let's pop that to one side and I will grab my die cutter because this is where we need to trim this down. Uh, somewhere buried on my desk, oh, I can't find it, is, there it is, my die. So this is one of the stitched rectangle dies. Um, so I'm going to die cut this out using the, this particular size and because it's heat embossed it's a little wibbly but it's not too bad. I think I've got it straight so grab that. Sorry for the jolts. Another one coming. So that is our piece die cut, but of course it's the wrong size. We want it smaller. 
So all I'm going to do is line up my rectangle with my die and you can sort of feel when you've got the stitched bit in the stitching. So just get to that point and then pop your plates back in and go through and then let me pop that down there while I get rid of my die cutter and get rid of that piece because we don't need it and the moment of truth it's cut perfectly okay so the next thing I need is a scrap of gold uh, copper foil let's see what we've got in here that might be Yes, that's a piece that I gutted from um, something else I did. Okay, now I'm going to cut the final piece from the back because then I can line up my, <coughs> excuse me, my die cut piece and mark where I need to cut. <coughs> excuse me, I don't know where that's come from. Okay, so pop that there, cut, perfect. Do love our new trimmer, it's amazing. And there is my beautiful piece of die cut foil. Now I'm just going to run my bone folder round the edge because as I've cut it from the back, there is just a little lip and we don't want a little lip. Then snail across the back and I am being reasonably generous because although having die cut it this isn't as curly as it was it is still a little curly so I'm going to make sure it's as flat as I can get it and then I just need some dimensionals to pop on the back. I'm not putting one in the middle, I would normally, but we're going to have ribbon. So here is our heat embossed piece and I'm going to use the cherry cobbler, what's this call itself, diagonal stripe cherry cobbler and it's cherry cobbler and vanilla. I think it's cherry cobbler and ivory and I know that's kind of picky on my part. Um, I don't think it's quite vanilla. Uh, and I'm just going to see if I can locate the middle. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That'll be the middle then. Okay. Now all I've got to do is keep it there. Uh, in fact, let's, let's turn it over and run the ribbon underneath. It might be easier that way. I don't know. It's just, just a suspicion I have. Okay, so... One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if I center this here between these two lines, because this is slightly unhelpfully a three eighths of an inch wide, not half an inch. If it had been half an inch, it would be really easy to line up against inch marks on my grid sheet, but it's not. So that's fine. Uh, and then I'm going to get. A little bit of tear and tape and just making sure that I am reasonably square. It's not going to be perfection but it's going to be reasonably square. Just take that off, pop that down, grab another little piece of tear and tape, pop it down One, two, three, four, five, six, and a bit. So it's there and square. And then peel the backing off. Oops. And then just pop that up. And then 
we have hopefully that doesn't look square to me no that is anything but square so let's one two three four five six seven one two three four five six and not seven and seven that's better okay so before I put this away the only other thing I need to do with it is to tie a bow so I'm going to do one of my bunny ear auntie betty bow bows um, for those of you who are new to my channel you are now thinking I'm completely mad bunny ears and auntie betty bows um, well my aunt betty as a child couldn't tie bows so she used to do them like this and they got known as auntie betty bows because she carried on doing it in later years as well. So now I do just want to try and twist that tail so that I've got the same... It's not going to play ball, is it? Let's cut the... Let's cut the ribbon and see if I can get this to twist under that knot and then tighten up because the stripe is subtly different on both sides of or on each side I should say of the ribbon and whilst I don't mind there being a difference on the knot I do object to there being a bit a difference on the tail so I do like to give it a twist and then just even out my ends a bit, so my loops I should say, there we go, come on twist, you will twist, and then I just, I'm going to be, I'm, mm, this is going to annoy me slightly because of course the stripes on the ribbon each side are going in a different direction, I'm going to have to just live with it. Right, okay, enough procrastination over ribbon and ends. So let's just get those off and pop my stamped piece on. And I'm going to come slightly down. Normally I would say if you've got a piece like this, you should go slightly up from centre. But because I'm going to be adding a bow and various other bits, I'm coming down from centre so that I've got room for the other bits. Right, glue dot. And pop that there. And then I've got Jingle Bells, which are in Cherry Cobbler, for me, they're in Cherry Cobbler, Shaded Spruce and Gold. That's how I see them. Um, I don't know whether that's an official colour, I'll have a look in a minute, but I see them as those colours. Be, I would be happier if that stuck on better. There we are. So I'm going to pop a cherry cobbler and I need to move just a wee bit. There we go. So one cherry cobbler. Come on. Do it. We'll do it the hard way. So one cherry cobbler, two cherry cobbler, and I don't know that gold's going to do it for me. Mm, no, no, I think I'll, I think I'll survive. Although there is a trick. Where are we time-wise? Oh no, 19 minutes. No, no. I'll show you the trick later. You can change the colour. Can, honest you can. I'll show you another time. In fact, I might even do that as a top tip Tuesday. Oh, I wonder what I was doing tomorrow. Well, there you are. So then we take this one and we just pop that in there. And then grab my card base, fold it in half, and then lots of, well not lots of, a scribble of a multi-purpose liquid adhesive and pop that onto my card base, 
hold it in place while I pop the lid on this. I'm only having to hold it in place because because it's heat embossed, it wants to curl. So there we are. That's my cherry cobbler and copper. This is my shaded spruce and gold. Let me know which one you prefer. Do remember to go and look at my website and have a hop around some of the other people taking part in the blog hop and come back tomorrow and I'll show you what I was intending to do with this. I may even change this out before I do the photographs. You never know. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, as I've said, and subscribe in the bottom right hand corner. If you're in the UK and would like any of these products, you can shop with me either by following the link below or over on my website. And do remember, during between the 2nd and 17th of November, if you place an order with me and use the host code, or if you share either a YouTube video, blog post, or Facebook business page post, you will get entered into my draw for a Stamparatus. Uh, shopping gets you five draws, sharing and commenting that you have shared gets you one, and it's one for YouTube, blog post or Facebook, so you can't do one every day and get lots and lots of entries, it's one per platform. Thank you very much indeed for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye!